Okay, Jack. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. It is uh it's awesome to talk to you. And um, you know, I've been very impressed taking a look at your work uh just at the uh, at the 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 breadth and depth you might say of of what you're you know what you're trying to tackle here it's it's quite a feat and um i guess i just i'm going to throw it over to you like i do with so many people who come on for the first time you know just talk to me and my audience about who you are what your story is and and we'll pick up somewhere along the way okay who is jack stafford yeah sure well i'm a a super troubadour well i was i was traveling around the world playing house concerts and I did a lot in Australia, actually, and New Zealand. I've traveled by bicycle. I cycled from uh, from um, all the way up the East Coast Amazing. as far as Cairns. Yeah, and then I got a boat to Darwin. You're one of those then, crazy yeah. people that I see I see riding their bikes <laughs> you know, along the... Uh, and I think, where are they traveling to? Yeah, sometimes you see people and, and they're clearly on an adventure, you know, somewhere far, far away. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, with a, mine had a bicycle sticking yeah. out the, the top. <laughs> yeah. So I did all that. I did about many years going around the world and I settled in Italy because my girlfriend's Italian and we would, why not? You know, if you get offered to come to Italy, you do it, don't you? Especially yeah. if love is the, is the ticket. So I've been here ever since, you know, but what with, with COVID, no more traveling. Um, I don't have to tell you what it's like down in Australia. I'm sure you know. So the only thing to do is start a podcast. And this is what I did. I, I was doing podcasts just to promote my last album. And that was fantastic. Really enjoyed it. Coming on, talking to people about myself for an hour. Hey, it's everyone's dream. <laughs> and so I thought I could start my own podcast. And, you know, I'm a songwriter. I write songs about people I meet. I've done that going around the world. So when I have a podcast, I do that. So I write songs about the people on my show. I had a hundred episodes in the first year because uh, nothing else to do. Hmm. And I'm really proud of that. Yeah, we did. So we're, we're now on 101 episodes and it's slowed down a lot now. I've taken it a bit easier, yeah, but yeah. I'm trying to focus more on promotion and but it's been a great journey and I'm, I'm having a wonderful time interviewing, speaking to people all around the world. Yeah. Man. And, and so it, it is true that in, in, in a year you wrote a hundred songs what what's the process there that's that's a pretty well, wild achievement for, for wow well, you know sure well there's two ways to write a song you can sit down and do it in a collaboration or a mathematical way you know you write down you're making it rhyme or you can just channel it you know you can be so inspired so hyped up after an interview that it just you pick up the guitar and it flows through you and then you work out the lyrics and the details later and that's always the way i i work so in that in that golden hour after an interview I do the song straight away, then I record it to a click track and send it. To, then I go to a studio with musicians once a week and we they add on all the, because these are proper produced songs. You know, it's it's not just acoustic guitar. Mm. So I have a, I do have a team to do that. Otherwise, that would be too much for me. Mm. Amazing. Okay, so so you tend to write these songs in the hour after the... Uh, after the interview, you called that the golden hour. Yeah. Um, okay, so you know, what is your kind of creative process like when you're you're writing these songs? Because for everybody else who's listening, I mean, you know, they might be lucky to write a song a week or a song every few days. But you're thinking, okay, like a hundred in a year. That's that's pretty crazy. Like, what is your specific creative technique um, or uh, process for for, for yeah, get, writing? Get out the way. Yeah, yeah get out the way. So I used to write songs when I was up before, you know, if I'd had a, met a fun guy and had a great night. When I was traveling, I wrote so many songs just because you're in the moment, the universe is talking through you and then you're inspired. And I think that's what happens with a lot of bands is that they get, or musicians, they, they try to get the conscious mind because you have the conscious mind in the middle, you have the subconscious underneath, and then you have the, the higher conscious mind, your higher mind. And the, with Western psychology, they, they make a mistake in that they group, they group the lowest, the highest and the lowest of our minds together into the subconscious. But that's in, inaccurate. The subconscious is responsible for right now when my body is digesting, you know, vitamin K and taking it to a cell in my body. And it knows my heart rate and the the blood levels in my brain, that's my, my subconscious, but my higher mind 
which is what writes the songs and what channels through me is when I my conscious mind is not involved. So that's what I really try to do is to get out of the way. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I understand that that's, that's certainly good advice for, for artists, right? And I think that artists in general will understand that more than perhaps people who aren't in the uh, creative professions, right? Um, however, it's, 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 it's kind of, wouldn't you say it, it's something that is almost, I understand that everybody can get into that flow state, right? Flow state, that's the word I was going to use, yeah. So it, it could be, I mean, an accountant can get into a flow state in accounting if that's their true, you know, that's the thing exactly. that they do, you know. Um, yeah. And so I'm interested that, you know, after the interview, you feel like that's just that golden hour where, you know, the inspiration is flowing through. And it sounds like you're kind of, kind of you're the kind of person who knows how to catch those moments. So it's... Yeah isn't it kind of like getting out of the way at the right time as well? Yeah. And also because I'm doing three or four interviews a week, if I have to go back to that, like I have actually missed a few now I've missed two or three from ones I've done. And to, I've got to, to go back to that. I'm going to have to get up so much energy. I'm going to listen to the whole interview again, listen to this, study the guest, get my energy up again. And then, or maybe read about it the night before and then wake up really early in the morning, go into the, when the sun's right, you know, rising and the, the dew is on the grass and and I'm, before my my mind is woken up i can tune into the ethers then and i was thinking about the subject the night before so mm -hmm. that should flow through but it's a lot more effort to do that i should have just done it straight away yeah you've got to catch that moment of inspiration mm -hmm. and um and yes yeah, so i find that very fascinating and and just as an artist as well i think um it's you know, this is advice that I got from my kind of um, more artistic mentor, Sharon LaBelle. She just said, you know, get up every morning and the first thing that you do is write. And I think specifically what she was trying to say was find a time when you know that the inspiration is going to be there and just build that habit. And do you feel like over time that habit of music making has strengthened as you have understood the right times to be engaging in that and 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 built that? I, I guess, do you feel like it comes easier and easier as you build that strong habit and time and place um, for this sort of music making? Yes, definitely. Yeah. I think also the, you become an outlet for, for consciousness to flow through as well. People know that that's a place they can get songs out. Um, yeah. So it's just, just a muscle as well. I can just tune into that. You know, maybe you can tune, if you're counting, you can tune into figures, like you say, but that's what I can tune into. So because mind, it's important to understand on a metaphysical level that mind, we exist in a sea of mind. And we have lodged, we're more evolved than, than a dog or a cat because we have lodged a higher level of mind in our, in, our, in our structure. And we exist in a sea of mind. So you can have people sitting in, the, in a room and the difference between a great painter or a great writer or a great artist or, or a great thinker or scientist is they can tune in their radio to a higher level of mind. This frequency is not that we're all picking up in externally. The, your mind is a radio. Mm. So that's, that's important to understand is that, so I could be in the sitting in the same room as a great scientist and they're tuning into different frequencies. It's like, you know, FM, AM radio, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. These are all these different frequencies existing between my, hands right now but i have i cannot believe you that just is impossible that they are that, that all the all those radio signals are in between my hands now it's just mm. i don't i can't i don't think so yeah yeah I, I certainly am interested in this idea that you know you mentioned how okay you can be in a room full of people for example who are actively listening to you right there's I, I think that this is something that musicians get a real sense of, right? Because we stand in front of an audience and I think Joe Rogan has talked about this, about even with comedy, he feels like it's actually the art of almost a meditation that everybody goes into or a, a state where everybody is locked in together, a hypnosis. And yeah. when the comedian is so locked in with the audience, something happens there where they become one thing. And I feel very much the same when I'm performing and, you know, when, when 
the band is locked in with each other and we're all listening and we're all paying attention um, while at the same time, you know, letting go and allowing the art to happen. And when that happens, it's like that brings the audience into that mind as well. And, and it does become one thing because when the band starts to really go at it, you know, you can see the audience, especially in a jazz concert, something like that, you yeah, know, like yeah. everybody will, you know, just get right into it. And that's, that's kind of amazing. I, and there's this other thing that I was thinking, I remember I was uh, having dinner with my wife one day at this beautiful little Japanese restaurant. And I remember thinking that humans have this strange ability to almost create a soul outside of what we would consider ourselves, right? So you go into a restaurant and there's beautiful art on the walls and there's certain ways that they've set it up and there's, you know, certain ways that they set the tables and that they bring the food and all this sort of stuff. And you think that all contributes to almost like the spirit of a room, you know, and you walk mm -hmm. in and you cannot help but be enchanted by those sorts of things. And we have to think that's very strange that the human mind does that, right? That we, that we, uh, that we participate in the outer world like that. And, and, we, we we find these new states almost right yeah there is a there is a group soul for every every organization and every people and um, i know what you're saying about that that atmosphere that they say in in holland gazellech and in uh in Dan in scandinavia they say hooglik is that that wonderful atmosphere it's almost tangible when you walk into a, mm. a nice place and that's the reason i can't do online concerts because i've done live concerts like you so there's no soul if I do a, I've been spoiled because I speak to yeah. a lot of musicians and they, they haven't done live concerts before, but they're thriving. And, and also interestingly enough, I was speaking to a pot, another podcast host and he's always done in-person interviews. He traveled around in a van all around America doing in-person interviews. And now he can't go back to this. He says he used the analogy of sex with the sex with a condom. He couldn't, he it just felt terrible to him. So yeah. if, if you've, once you've experienced this one-on-one -on -one, having zoom and having this sterile conversation to me, it's fine. It's all I've ever known with podcasting, yeah. but I imagine if I'd been spoiled by meeting you in person, I imagine it's a completely different vibe and we, we'd be connecting more on a, not just a vision of, I mean, I can see you now we're having a visual verbal, but there's this, this nonverbal communication that we'd be having and connecting oh, yeah. in person. Yeah, it's, um, it really is an open question, like how much we are missing out, you know, uh, that we're not face to face. And I think that that in part is uh, why you see such massive success for podcasts like Joe Rogan experience, where he just sits down with people, you know, face to face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you see this with, with other podcasts as well. Some of my favorite people to listen to is when they're just like right there face to face, the energy is you know, oh, yeah. right up there. And it's just quite amazing. Um, and I, I really want to talk to you about your time traveling around the world um, and doing these house concerts. Cause that, that's quite a feat. How many, how many house concerts did you end up doing? I don't travels? know. I've said, I must've been like 700 or something like that. I, I just, because wow. you're doing it every night. So, you know, you roll up every day as a movie, you know, every day you wake up in the morning, it's a different town. And it's, it's just a fantastic experience. And sometimes you don't have them in a rain. I used to start with couch surfing the mm. website. And then there's another one for cyclists called warm showers. Cause I was touring by bicycle. So these people who are, they're open to hospitality and they would let me come in. And then I'd say, you know, invite your friends around and have we do a concert. So mm. even if it wasn't publicized and I just sing for my supper or sometimes it was publicized That's in brilliant. advance and I did a, a proper, but in the end I stopped. I stopped playing venues because there's no connection with the audience in a venue. When, when people are sitting around me and it's just going back to what you were saying earlier, people are sitting around me and there's this, this tangible energy and I can just stop in a song and talk to them and have a chat and they're, they're right there, you know, making eye contact. And if, if one person isn't enjoying the show, I go and sit on their lap or something or, you know, it, there's that it's incredible compared to a, a venue. It's just a, unless you play rock or something, but if you're seeing a, a singer songwriter, then it's just, it's a terrible way to see a musician. A house concert is the, uh, it's the best. Plus you're playing in a, no, these people, you get better attendance because 
these people had never had a concert in their homes before mm. so you, all their friends came along whereas if oh, i'm going down to the to the bar to see a singer songwriter would you come and talk through the show with me and there's no comparison yeah yeah okay well i want to talk to you about this more because i want i want some really um uh tangible advice for how you'd start doing something like this because i as an artist really want to try this and i know that other people will as well um because i i will be moving to the states this year um hoping uh, as long as the u.s visa gives uh, the u.s consulate gives me my visa um which should be fine hopefully (laughs) maybe i'm on a few lists but um so uh (laughs) So basically, when I go to the States, um, I've already talked to people about this because I, I know a few people around the States who I've coached or who I've had on the podcast. And I'm absolutely going to be couch surfing with them as I kind of go around and take a look a- around the place. Um, what 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 is the process that, you know, gets you to start doing that? Okay, so you say you you went on couchsurfing.com. Uh, what what I, I haven't known much about that, that process. You know, do, do you get... Do, do you pay people to to go into their homes or did you just offer let me do a concert yeah. and have me for free there or something like that yeah these there are these hyper social people in in every society they're the central the fulcrum mm. of each group and you so you go on the city group pages the chat rooms or also meetup.com and offer your services but probably the best way to start is have one in your own home mm. of yourself and then invite other artists in as well you know it's the same with couch surfing. If before you start traveling around, you have to host, you've got to give before you get, just so you build up some references. There are websites like concertsinyourhome.com in America, as one I know about, and there's some others probably. But yeah, just get, get it going, make yours a good one. And then people will say, you know, I'm having a birthday coming up. Would you like to do it in my home? You, you introduce people to the idea and then it spreads like, like wildfire. Hmm. Amazing. And how many, so you said you did 700 concerts. How, how long was this period of time? Ah, in a couple of years, probably did 400 in two years. But yeah. I mean, I was going around every night, so I was living on the road, so I didn't have a home. Yeah. So every night was a show. It depends on how you, how you define an audience of one or an audience of two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause That's I was singing for my supper. Yeah. Look, yeah. I mean, look, sometimes uh, an audience, audience of two that, are really paying attention, you know, it can be better than <laughs> a whole room of people just eating their dinner. You know, sometimes that can be. Oh, it's because I got, yeah. I got booked in a tour, you know, I booked a tour. So I do a tour and when I didn't have a night in a venue, I'd do a house concert, but really, you know, those were, those were disasters because a stranger comes into town and you've got no, no name, no name. You're not known. No one comes to see you. But if, like I said before, if it's, a, if it's in Ted's living room, Ted has banned a singer in in his living room. I'm gonna go. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the way to go. That's yeah. quite amazing. And were you writing a lot of music over this period as well? Oh yeah, because I, I met people. You know, I met you know state logging protesters, and you you're fascinated by his story, and so you just you know you're up, so you write a song. Um, yeah. Or, or, or all sorts of activists and just people I met and the stories about our adventures, just kind of a doc, like a troubadour, you know, that's what he did. He, he, I took the news from the last village to the, to the next one as I arrived mm. on my donkey. Probably that's why I did in the last life. It's just carried on. Well, I, I didn't actually, like I'd heard the word troubadour before, but I had to look it up before. I'm, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but troubadour is a kind of like a traveling lyric poet uh yeah it's, it, what's what's the what's the tradition of the troubadour it's french right uh, i think it's a french word yeah it's uh yeah it's kind of, yeah because you've got to remember you know we moan about our music being on spotify but you know if you think back through the annals of music you know it's cds and then vinyl before that and then you know it used to be sheet music it used to you to be by you send you release your new track mm. drop your new track by posting out all the sheet music mm. all around the the country but that was a that was a flash in the pan before people just used to you'd have musicians come to town you know and, and entertain you and and you want to hear the lyrics you want to hear you want to hear jokes you want to hear stories mm. these are ballads these are these are the, the folk songs this is what is what we used to do you know you mean sure you can have your parlor music where you're playing a nice harpsichord but that's probably for the posh folks the the regular folks they will want to see Dancing, bawdy jokes, 
and comedy songs and and troubadour songs. So yeah, yeah, quite amazing. I want to know um, what you noticed about the people who had you in their homes because you've mentioned a few things so far. Firstly, you've mentioned uh, okay, so logging protesters, activists. Okay, so now I'm starting to get a picture. These are kind of probably the more artistic people in society. They tend to kind of play in those worlds. Um, also, you mentioned that they're kind of like the the, the centers of their communities because they're they're always looking for you know kind of these new opportun- these new experiences, welcoming people into their homes. Uh, what else did you notice about the types of people who I guess you had the best time with um, out on the road? Um, yeah, it was so many interesting people. I'm, I'm having to think back now. Let me check on my website to remind myself of what, sure. I've, what I've done because, you know, I've written 500 songs. Mm. So I don't remember. I just don't remember. It's 10 years ago that I was yeah, a yeah. touring troubadour. Yeah. But... Um, what- what ended up uh, making you decide to to stop that to stop that path? I was exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was very discombobulated, and you know it sounds great talking about it now, but having no home is tiring. Uh, always on the go, yeah. always moving around. Every night having that get to know you conversation. Um, yeah, I just got I just got really run down. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't go back to that life. Yeah. I, you know, I'm, I live now in relative seclusion in the south of Italy, just doing podcasts and writing songs about that. You know, I've got my skill. I've done. I've earned my uh, stripes, so to speak. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I did forty countries in two years. So yeah, I wrote songs about busking. Um, a lot about my girlfriend who I met on the road. She was very inspiring. I just wrote Coffee Lover for her. We, because we're busking, so I didn't. We had no money, so I wrote a song because she was Italian. She needs coffee, so mm-hmm. I wrote a coffee song. So we'd walk into a cafe and a bar. You know, I'd, I'd ask them to turn the stereo off. I'd stand on a table and play a song, and you know, everyone would. I'd get a free, we'd get a free coffee and a free tea because I'm British. <laughs> and a tea every time because nobody does that. Wow. So. Yeah, there's songs about dumpster diving, song about Queensland Rail. Um, I'm going to have to listen to that song, definitely. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> Queensland Rail, because I played on the radio every time. we go into a town and then I would, I'd call up the local radio and say, you know, hey, Jack Stafford's in town. Amazing. Um, yeah, and I'd have, they'd have me on the radio to do a show. So I, And then all everyone in the town would hear me. So, yeah. and then they would say, who wants a concert with Jack tonight? And, or and then I'd always get a gig through that before going on the radio. Uh, song about the going around the Gulf of Carpentaria. Um, yeah, it's just documenting all my all my travels through through my songs. Really, mm. it's a, it, it was a lyrical diary. That's quite a quite a feat. And and you know you 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 seem to have a very um, strategic mind when going through these things about you know what can i do to make sure that i get a home tonight you remind me of uh, <laughs> there's there's this um there's this great interview between tim ferris and the journalist cal fussman where cal basically talks about his time traveling for about 10 years throughout europe and he would get on a train every every day to get to the next town or every week to get to the next town and he said that he had to pick a person to sit next to in the train based on the knowledge that he had to be invited back to their home by the time they got to the next town. And so he wouldn't Mm. pick like the hot girl who he wanted to talk to. He wouldn't, he'd pick like the old lady who he could talk to about like her jam recipe or something like that. And then, you know, he'd get invited and you seem to have this very strategic approach of saying, okay, go into the town, get on the radio, ask people, you know, go on couch surfing or, what are some other strategies that you use to make the most out of this and to make sure that you are getting into places and getting seen and heard? Yeah, we go start busking into in the town as well. Just put a sign down, say, um, uh, traveling troubadours, um, the peddling troubadours. So you say we, multiple? I, was, I did invite people to travel with me, other, other cool. 
it became sort of a, a band yeah mm. so because yeah we, when we were cycling around australia there was two other guys and so we'd just be and i mean we we addressed we went to to thrift shops and bought you know old ladies clothes you know super bright colorful clothes so we looked like a band of minstrels and yeah we just would play it busk on the street and people would you know these are small towns in australia for example i mean people were people were impressed you know yeah <laughs> the word gets that these are don't go to big towns i mean this is not city stuff no in a city everyone's got you know eyes down you know you've got to rock up in a small town a bigger town you have to go on the radio smaller mm. towns everyone knows you within after the first morning i mean because you're outside the coffee shop we would find a place to sleep by by lunchtime just because people were you know they were so friendly they said you're in a small town you've got that small town vibe and nothing interesting has happened there people wanted to come with us people started cycling with us forest gump you know you know what it's like mm -hmm. because you're this crazy bunch of dudes cycling around playing music so yeah. it's it's like a rock band yeah but much more accessible so yeah i mean if you just do it tomorrow it's just it's an instant story because you have this energy about you that you know you you know you know and there's this rhythm through the day because the bakeries you know you can go to the bakeries at the end of the day and they're all giving away the bread mm. and you know there's the there's the dumpster diving as well and the, you know the you go to the supermarket back of the supermarkets you get food so we'd have more food we had more food than we didn't know what to do with you know and then and yeah. getting a place to eat sleep was no problem because everyone would slip on the floor on couches you know no everyone has everyone has a floor you know so mm. It was no trouble. You know, the universe just opened its arms to us, and we, you just ride on a wave around the world. Yeah, but it's tiring. I <laughs> yeah, I, no, I, I love this story because it, it's it's um, it's inspiring because I think it's the kind of life that a lot of people dream of having at least and at least a few years of that adventure. Of yeah, when you're young, there, young and dumb it. enough. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. <laughs> young and dumb enough. I'm not. Um, I wouldn't do it now. I just. I'm too fussy. I want a nice bed. I don't want to, yeah. I want, yeah. <laughs> well, it certainly is a stage that people enjoy going through. It's almost like a rite of passage, right? Um, exactly. Yeah. I'm just going to go close my blinds quickly. Cause this is the time, time of morning where it looks like an angel is coming through the window. With the I sun. saw that. Yeah. I thought you were <laughs> yeah. getting, I was inspiring you. Okay. So I do want to know though, um, I'd love to know, okay, your, if you can pick favorite country that you visited, perhaps even favorite town and why. And then I want to jump back into pod songs and ask you about some of your favorite guests who you've talked to. But um, yeah, I'll, I'll start with favorite country and favorite town, if you can pick one. Oh, well, I met my girlfriend in New Zealand and that has always a place in my heart. It's, it's, Australia is great, but it's, you know, the pockets are very spread apart, whereas New Zealand is super compact different in terrain different in people mm. um drivers are terrible though they don't they try to kill you on the bicycle but, <laughs> but once but you can stop and hitchhike i mean you can hitchhike anywhere so the people are good like that uh you can watch for those huge logging trucks but yeah so we, you know when we used to hit just hitchhike we get tired with hitchhike you, know, you just hold out for a front wheel and then stop and start chatting and then usually the, the place you would hitchhike would let you sleep on their couch as well so yeah, New Zealand was great for that because it's kind of like I say, small town but small country. Yeah, um, and it was yeah. I don't know what it's like now, but it's ten years ago, so it was a it was a great experience. Yeah, mm. it was a kind of a golden a golden period. I wonder if you could elaborate a little bit more on the small town thing, because like okay, some I've spent a lot of time in small towns in Australia because um, my. Uh, my parents, their company is basically they go around to small towns in Australia and they sell Christmas decorations for shop front windows of all things. It's a very jolly business, but um, it, my dad has always avoided the big cities when it comes to his business. Um, one of the reasons is, you know, it turns out that country people are just easier to talk to sometimes, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're always going to have the business owner in the store. You know, they're always there willing to have a chat in the middle of the day. Um, but that there is there is a difference between, you know, when you're taking your, whether it's your product or your service or your art, you know, at, into these places uh, versus 
the big cities what what are some other things that you think that is like what is it about the small town that you know makes such a difference for an artist well people were bored that was a big thing yeah I mean, yeah just by necessity they're looking for something to do please <laughs> yeah I get, I get that yeah yeah because in a city it's all about bandwidth and that's also something i learned about um because i've never been homeless and i've never been hungry and even when i was traveling around the world we were busking but you know i had a bank account if i really wanted to i had mm. you know i hope, hope but you know you we were in this mindset with the guys we were we were just going so your bandwidth shrinks down you know you're you're focused on that so i can understand really homeless people and um people who are struggling in their lives is that you know you get we were very focused on where we sleep you know we've got that okay where's to eat you know we so we, we weren't in an ex we went to the bliss state you know we were we were in a more of a worried state a kind of semi you know we, but that made it exciting you know because yeah. there was this thing of an adventure but like i say it was a bit tiring but we weren't like you know we weren't aesthetics wandering around you know we, we had these cravings we wanted our beer and we wanted a and night, you know, we want excitement, we wanted this and that. And we, so we were bouncing from craving to craving. So I did, this is something I've, I've done this trilogy of albums afterwards, Body, Mind, Spirit. And uh, so I've, I'm involved more, I do it differently now in a more relaxed way. So, um, but yeah, going back to what you're saying about small towns is that, yeah, in the cities, everyone is, you know, they just got, they're over, their bandwidth is also too stretched, you know, too overstimulated, too many options. And, you then have these connections with people there's more of this this stranger factor you know you wouldn't speak to a stranger you know if you know if somebody's a homeless guy on the street you would you know step over him because you know he's it's not a good but if that happens in a, in your home street you know it's a huge hugely different experience so yeah i think i think uh, that's the reason we 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 found it a lot easier in the small towns mm. yeah yeah amazing i love it and then you moved to italy and uh oh, yeah and you that moved there for love trip. right <laughs> yeah i mean that was so i'm i'm a rolling stone so i to settle down with my girlfriend's parents is you know it's a bit of a shock because you know my vard is up i want to be moving i'm moving i'm moving and so i was like a bouncing ball so i did leave a few times and come back and i went to india and then i came back and then the bouncing ball gradually and now there's no motion i'm completely <laughs> yeah okay yeah yeah that trick that's an interesting way to put it as a bouncing ball and now it's just yeah that's that's where you yeah. decided to fall and um your your partner from italy then yeah she's from this village so i don't have to do anything i mean i'm really i, I speak the language eventually just purely by saturation but you know the electricity bill the internet bill the house she fixed us up with everything and so she's she's an architect she built me a house wow so yeah amazing yeah <laughs> i got yeah, a good man. i got a good ticket yeah <laughs> yeah man <laughs> i mean that's perfect for a musician right that's great and and yeah. so okay beautiful and um and so you start doing this pod songs podcast uh in at the start of covid is that when you you really began yeah exactly yeah because you know it's, it's going back to the city it's, it's a curse they say a chinese curse may you live in interesting times because mm. you won't develop spiritually, you won't be able to go inside, you know, all of these problems. So if you, to be in a small town and be motivated is is difficult. I've taken me a long time to be a dynamo in a small city because you take on the mind of a place, you know, the thoughts mm. of others. It's hard. You do get sucked down. So so it was quite difficult for me for that, but now I have got my place and my space, and I am able to be a dynamo in a in a small town, yeah, and have no distractions. So I was able to do this start this pod songs project because I didn't have any distractions. I did get I got very into permaculture, and I did go into a long period. You know, I, I run after things and I was into into other things, but I kind of burnt my interest off there, and and I went back to the music and and um, because on one of my travels I found. I did found spiritual enlightenment in a in a in a I know you found it through the stoic path is it not not enlightenment as in a bright light coming down but as in a uh, a framework with which you can work around the, yeah a path the, a path that you can walk a, you know yeah yeah a path so I found that with the Ethereum society which is a spiritual organization I discovered when I was in India and I said it's okay so I really want to have a, a a way to promote in a 
in a way, like what you said before, that really focuses because before I just dropped my music. Mm -hmm. I made my music and it's so good. The world should find it naturally. But dead, actually, fortunately, that doesn't happen as I found yeah. out to my cost. So I really said, okay, now I need a way. I need a, I've got a message now. I need to communicate what's the, the best way. I really asked the universe this question. And I came up with this idea of pod songs. I interview famous people. And the best way to become famous is to interview famous people. And that's what Joe Rogan does, what all the, all the people do. Um, so I reached out to all of them. Uh, all the people who've been on Joe Rogan, all the people who've been on the top podcasts and offered to write them a song. And they said yes, because nobody's ever done that before. No, it's like, it's like making a movie about you. And I was really surprised people said yes. And I spoke to very famous people. I've spoken to more, more Harvard professors in the last year than you and I can count. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's just grown and grown. And, and now the next phase is to, I get guest musicians to come on. So I get famous musicians to write songs for famous people and I release it through mm. my show. And so this is the formula that I hope will, will be my rocket booster. Yeah. Amazing, man. Amazing. And who are some of the favorite guests that you've uh, had on so far? <clears throat> Probably the most famous was Alan Dershowitz, the lawyer, um, who was Donald Trump's lawyer and um, Epstein's wow. lawyer. Yeah, I oh think he was gosh. having a bad time. I yeah. think he needed some... I think he wanted a song about himself. Yeah. That was a real <laughs> cheerful. He needed cheering up. He came on in sweatpants and and uh and uh he was just down, I think. So yeah. I, I got him, you know, it's pretty really great. And many, many other professors and writers and scientists and yeah, it's just people who are who would never speak to me if I didn't offer them to write them a song. You know, you know how difficult it is to I'm sure you have a wish list of guests to get on the show and it's a numbers game, you know. You're emailing so many people, mm. and so many few few people agree to come on. But um, yeah, if you are, if you offer, if you give, you get. You know. Yeah, yeah, and that's such a that's such an interesting idea. Just to to reach out to people and say, "I'll write you a song. Come on the show," and and it's it's such an interesting angle to have, right? And and this is the this is the thing because you're a creative individual, clearly, and this is something I've been thinking about lately is that that sometimes we can put a box around our creativity and say okay creativity it's for my music or it's for this but mm -hmm. i i think one of the most important moments in my life was when i stopped calling myself a jazz trumpeter or a jazz singer and started saying no 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 that creativity flows over into other areas and my job is to uh -huh, figure yeah. out exactly where it travels right and that creativity traveled into poetry and it traveled into piano that I you know started to take up and it traveled into all these different areas and then I started thinking okay this creativity flows over into business as well let's see what I can come up with as creative ideas that and and every company every individual who is trying to start something something needs a creative individual with them in order to facilitate that new thinking about new paths pathways that would lead us to our end goal and what you've demonstrated here is it's like, okay, well, how do I get really interesting guests on my podcast? I'm going to write them a song. Like you say, nobody has ever offered that to them. So of course they're going to, they're at least going to stop and think, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> should I, yeah. should I do this? So I wonder if you could talk to that as well about like just expanding the influence of your creative creativity and, and perhaps how other people can do that as well. Yeah. I came across this word, a Gesamtkunstwerk as well. It's made, it's the German word that means total artwork. So total I, artwork. we have, yeah, yeah, total artwork. So we have, we have dancers in the music videos. Um, we have now we have a painter or an artist come yeah, on. I was YouTube wondering if video. that was you or somebody else. So that, so you're bringing other people into this adventure as well. Yeah. 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 So I'm a conduit. Mm. Uh, I'm delegating everything. So I, ho I hope to delegate the interview soon. Mm. <laughs> if yeah. you're interested in another job. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, trust me i have so much on my plate at the moment <laughs> i'm sure you do i'm sure you uh, do You're see i'm awesome. i'm currently just going into that phase as well where i'm bringing people around me and saying okay like mm. let's go on this adventure together and i think that that is that is my 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 biggest weakness and perhaps you can talk to me about this because i know that you'll have some wisdom to share 
my biggest weakness is that I get so bogged down in the the tasks that I forget to kind of step back and be the manager sometimes and just say, mm. okay, you take care of this, you take care of this, together we'll all grow this. Um, and and I wonder, you know, obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff involved in doing this podcast. I mean, you've got to create the videos, you've got to be emailing people, you've got to, you know, do the interviews, you've got to put all of this stuff together, organize the paintings and all like, there's just so much to do. How do you delegate your time and how do you uh, set up this business in such a way that everybody is motivated to be moving towards that end goal? Well, I've found that the universe, we're in a classroom, planet earth. We're in, the, in this incarnation to learn things and to master our tasks. Because once we can do a task, we won't, or either our higher selves or, or our guides, <clears throat> we don't have to do it anymore. If you look, if you look at a company, if you can, if you can work on the on the factory floor, if you're very good, you're going to get promoted. Nobody wants the stellar worker on the floor. They you supervise other people, and you'll get promoted all the way up to the top. And that's the same with the same with the universe if you whatever you get good at i'm sure if you look back at your life once you've mastered something or let's not say master let's say you're not you're not the best in the world i know but you've mastered it to a decompetent degree mm. to, or to a level that you're supposed to learn in this incarnation you're going to be moved on to something else so it's important to do that you know to gain mastery okay then the universe will move you along and it will it will give you another another task to do so and that's happened with me i mean i i I've done these songs now. I, I'm a I'm, I'm a competent songwriter, so the universe is giving me idea. I've got an idea to bring on other songwriters. So you know, I just I'm reaching out to all these musicians, and you know they they're coming on, and they're they're as they're as as flattered as the guests, and as inspired as the guests. You know, they're just speaking to a guy now. He's, he's just graduated uh, college, and he did a, a master's in something related with climate change and he's super passionate about climate change and he's a musician and he's saying to his his bandmates we've got to do something you know some issue based music you know but then so then off for the out of the blue i email him and say you know would you like to come on and interview someone of your choice and write a song about it so we can interview his he can reach out to anyone now he's prof a professor or or a climate activist and we have an in-depth conversation he's an expert in that and he can write a conversation and then we do a whole we do a whole program with him you know we do a music video release the interview one week next week the the song next week a music video uh, there's an artist doing the music video uh, sorry doing a painting about it um there's dancers in the videos and so so and you know i have a social media calendar which i give him but i just have a formula formula so i change the name and they automatically populate it with the new release date and so I give mm. that to each artist and then they go away and they promote the show to their fans diligently, you know, because they're mm. invested in it. So, so I don't have to do that anymore. I do the interview. It takes me an hour. I, I edit it quickly. I've got someone, someone approaches me to do the music videos because that's their area of expertise. I've now found someone to do that. So, you know, I'm super streamlined, you know, I've got, I've got GMAS to do the emails. You know, I send out thousands of emails with their one click. Yeah. I'm completely automated because I've mastered each step and I've come along. I use Descript to edit the audio, edit the podcast. It takes me takes me 10 minutes. You know, yeah. it's so I get more, I get busier and busier, and then I get the universe gives me so the new idea I got today is I was going out cycling. Um I've got beautiful, beautiful road climbs here, I've got the mountains. I always get my ideas when I'm coming down the mountains. So I go up and I'm you know, I'm pumping, I'm pumping, I'm flowing, I'm flowing, I'm flowing, I'm pumping, I'm pumping, I'm pumping, the brain's blank, brain's blank, and then come down the mountain, wind in the hair, swinging through a sea of mind, and mm. I get pummeled with idea, and the idea I got today was, so I have to do it, because I'm doing, I'm interviewing people, I need to do a music magazine, so I'm, because I have the interviews of people, so it's a music art activism magazine, you know, like Rolling Stone, or, or, or something like that in that format, an online magazine. So because I have the interviews, I just need to edit them a little bit and pick out some quotes and you know write a nice intro. And I've got a magazine, so I can have an into articles about the guests, articles about the musicians, interviews with the artists, painting the picture. Yeah. And so it's sort of this 
so I'm become I'm become a record company because every week I'm releasing now an artist yeah who comes on to do a single with me and so I'm a record company and now I'm doing I'm the like the Rolling Stone and then probably the next thing is like have a Netflix series you know like song trust uh, song exploder made the jump from podcast to, to to Netflix series so if they can do it you know I can do it and then who knows maybe a TV channel so it's all interviews and documentaries and there's a whole you know I've got a path I've got a, an opportunity ahead of me now to to develop this just because I've mastered things and I've put them aside and they kind of run easy even without getting too many more people on board but you know if it, the people are rushing in to help as I go but just because it grow, it's growing you know so yeah yeah, so what I'm hearing is systemize. You know, once you've got a process for doing something, make sure that it can be easily replicated by you in, in a shorter and shorter time period. And I'm certainly noticing this as well on my end, this this period of, of time when you're trying to put something together and you start to notice that there are a whole bunch of people who really want to get on board in terms of helping you to do something. And I think that like that's the moment when you have to really kick into gear right and 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 start accepting these offers of help and and start taking people on in the adventure that you've been you know working towards and so yeah jack i mean this is this is very inspiring for uh you know not only for creatives i think for for people who are in business who start to think okay like there has to be this creative element of um yeah systemizing so that we can then focus on the most important thing which is continuing that journey upward and looking for more and more opportunities to expand what we're doing. So, yeah. Um, and hire, hire people, hire people to do what they're already doing. Yeah. Hire people that want to do that. If you hire, if you make it, you know, don't hire them and train them, hire them. If they're writing uh, music reviews, hire them to do that, what they're already doing, you know, mm. hire people to do their passions. So, you know, hire, hire the video girl because she was already obsessed with doing videos. She's doing it for free anyway. So, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I have my all my jobs in a in a circle in you know, this this flow diagram. So I have okay pre production. Yeah, please explain post, that. Pre production, production, post production, and promotion. And I promote to the pre production. So I promote to the guests and musicians. So I feed back in. You know, so I do advertising. You know, online targeted ads to find the guests so there's this cycle of promotion mm. um so i keep make sure there's this the wheel is constantly flowing so you do targeted ads online to find guests you say what what's what's that about i, I have no idea what what you'd be doing there well i do um i advertise on the music magazines as well so you know, okay. rolling stone with google ads you know display ads yeah you can have you only play per click but you get the display ads so that the people see you in the, I'm in the magazine, you know, mm. without having to pay. Um, and then I do a lot of email promotion to drive a researcher who finds the email addresses of guests constantly, you know, um, yeah. and the email to them promoting the show. And then they will, they will click and also come back and, and be featured on the show. So this is this, this, in, this constant cycle of promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, man. Well, this is this has been inspiring, and I think um, you know not only your creative output, but your the way that you're thinking about growing this business and 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 you know changing lives in the process. I think it's 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 a brilliant thing, and uh, and and it's also just in the world that we live in at the moment. It's so refreshing to see people really engaging in this kind of activity that that really has no downside. I mean. Um, so Jack, thank you so much for coming on the show. Was there anything else that you want to share with the audience before we, uh, before we head off? Well, I wanted to go, go back to the Ethereum society, which I mentioned, you know, you're, sure. I have another podcast called the, the mystic cast or cause I'm into brain to metaphysics now. And okay. I have this book called the nine freedoms, which has inspired me because I want to promote the Ethereum society. So pod songs is a vehicle mm. for promoting the teachings of the Ethereum society. And I, I recommend people check that out. We don't really have time to go into it now. And it's, it is quite far out, but uh, if you're on a search for truth, you know, you, maybe it resonates with you and you've just hit that one, hearing that one word, maybe you've heard it in a, in another, another time and space, mm. another place, maybe it resonates and you check it out. 
Yeah, so well, for, so you for say me, a mystic cast. Yeah, mystic cast is my podcast, and a theorist, A T H E R I U S, by Dr. George King is the is the society, and it's given me. You know, I do a lot of practices which have really enabled me to operate like this, and they've given me mm. such inspiration and opened all my channels to be a channel. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, thank you very much for that. And thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for doing what you do. I hope people go and uh, listen to pod songs and to the mystic cast as well and um, keep at it. And uh, I hope to talk to you very soon. Yeah. Thanks, mate. It's been a pleasure. You've been listening to the walled garden podcast. If you'd like to attend any of our free meetups and events, or if you'd like to get one-on-one mentoring with either Sharon LaBelle, Kai Whiting, or myself, just go to thewalledgarden.com. But for now, don't forget to nourish those gardens in your mind. Thank you.